We've never spoken to Geno Smith before, Seahawks quarterback. First time we've spoken to a Seahawks starting quarterback in quite some time, that's for sure. Geno, congratulations on winning the job last year and a great season, and nice to see you here this morning. Good morning. Man, thank you, guys. Thanks for having me. I uh, heard, heard, heard a lot of great things about you guys' show. That's so not true. Well, now know. I know that based on what G tells me, that's not true at all. <laughs> You're absolutely on the defensive, as you should be. This is going to be an attack over the course of the next 15 minutes or so. Uh We'll jump right into it. I, I, one thing that I think about with you that's interesting is is taking over the leadership of this team last year after a couple of seasons of being behind Russell, et cetera. Where did you learn how to lead? Uh, well, I think it just it started in my upbringing, in my home, um, you know, being the oldest child uh, of four, you know, being raised by my mother and father. Um, they always taught taught me about being a leader, you know, just to my younger siblings. And so it started there and uh, leading by example was something my mom was always big on. She's always like, you know, you got to set the example for your, your little brothers and sisters. So I think that's where it started. And then just playing football growing up my entire life, being a quarterback, uh, kind of being in that position all my life. I just got used to it. And so, uh, you know, when I was here, although I was the backup, I really never felt like, uh, you know, I was behind anyone. Um, but, I, you know, I played my role. Um, I was respectful, but I also, you know, tried to do my best to lead uh, in my position. Biggest piece of advice, counsel, that the head coach gave you when he told you last year you're the starter and on that leadership piece was what? You know, he told me to be myself. Uh, he told me to be uh, just who exactly who I am, uh, continue to work hard, um, don't think about any of the outside noise uh, and just focus on, you know, going out and proving myself and playing well, you know, doing the right things for the team. Uh, Coach Carroll is a great leader in himself. And so um, he, he doesn't ask you to do too much. He just wants you to be yourself and um, just be, you know, exactly who you are. It makes me wonder, just thinking about what you said, how many football players grow up being asked to lead. And as they go higher and higher, high school, college, the pros, it, it makes me wonder how many guys are out there that, could be leaders but maybe need the space given to them to grow up into that yeah i think that's uh and i think leadership kind of starts with the person you know every, every single individual has to lead themselves uh in order to be a great leader um you have to be accountable and so when you talk about accountability it comes with integrity and so those are the things that each person you got to police yourself on that and then if you want guys to follow you you got you better be doing everything the right way and um you better be a stand-up individual and uh you know the things that you say you better mean so uh i think it starts with the person and then it goes out and branches out into each each you know group group setting is that part of the reason why you flew to individually and to each of the locales or your wide receivers this off season uh it's a part of the reason you know um you know, I've I've always done like the group setting where we all get together and we throw. And I feel like, you know, when you do that like one on one stuff, you get a lot more out of it. You know, you get to really talk to the guy and, you know, build a bond with each guy individually in their home setting where they're comfortable. And so uh, I didn't want to, you know, displace guys and have them flying across the country and, and put them in places that they're not you know used to being and. Have, having them just leave their families and stuff in the off season, so I took it upon myself to to make that sacrifice. Do you and do have the kids? Traveling. I have one. Now I know. That's why. Now it'll come. You got a young kid. Yes. You're like, oh, you know what? I'll volunteer to fly across the country. <laughs> yeah. I got five or six different trips right. I got to make, honey. I, I can't yeah. be home right now. Yeah. Yeah. Now it all comes together. <laughs> yep, I yep, get it. Yep, I see. You yep, I read your mind. <laughs> yeah. I got you. My girls are all grown, Gino, and I can't stand. They watch the show called The Bachelor or Bachelorette now. Oh, yeah, and there's like yeah. every version of it, yeah. but they have their quote unquote hometown visit. Yeah. Right, where they get to go see the hometown. That's what I'm imagining yeah. you flying. Like, right. I get my hometown visit now with DK, and I get my hometown visit with Tyler. Exactly. Uh, and, and each guy is, uh, you know, very unique, very different. You know, they're all at different stages in their lives. Tyler just got married. Uh, DK is young, younger than Tyler, so he's got his own thing going on. And all those guys are different. So I get to kind of, you know, hit all aspects of it. You know what's funny? You didn't bring up a word. And when I would heard that story, I think I said on the air, you know what we don't talk about much is generosity. Talk about accountability and integrity, and a lot of books have been written about that with leadership. But how about generosity? How about, no, 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 I got paid. I got mine. I can now fly to you. I can yeah. go see you. Yeah. Generosity play a role now that you're in this position? Uh, well, I, I did that the year before, and I had always done that. And um, I think a lot of things get overlooked, but generosity is a big thing. Um, for me as well, um, I'm, I'm a, I got a big heart, man, and I love giving. And so um, I look at all, all of my teammates like my brothers, and I look at them and, and, and say, what would I do for a family member? And so I just kind of look at it like that. And, uh, yeah, if I can be generous, then I will. Talking to Geno Smith here on Seattle Sports, let me back you up just about a year. 
week one, you beat the Broncos, your first start as a Seahawk. How important in retrospect was that game and that win to everything else that happened last season? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, looking back on it in hindsight, it just set the stage for um, everything that happened after that. But, um, you know, it was a big game, man. It was, a, you know, a Monday night. Um, you got Russell coming back uh, after, you know, being traded. And um, there's a new team here in Seattle, kind of a new vibe, new feel. Everyone wants to see what, what it's going to be like. We just had a quarterback competition. Um, so there's a lot of different aspects. You feel a little at. different pressure there with Russ on the other sideline and knowing that it's your job. At this point, it's sort of your job for now. I mean, do you feel I that? Felt no pressure, honestly. I really didn't. Um, there's, I don't even live my life. I'm, I'm kind of cool with where I am in life. Whether it would have worked out or not, I was always going to be cool with it. And, um, you know, the good thing about me is I don't place all my eggs in one basket. So I'm, I'm well-rounded. And I don't look at football as like the end-all, be-all. So um, I was – there was no pressure. I just felt good about where I was at and was ready to go out and play. So you're telling me you're going, hey – I'm going to go out here and play as hard as I can. If it doesn't work out, it's cool. I'll fall back on art or business or whatever other – like, you, you have that in the back of your mind? Always, always, to this day. Uh, that's that's one thing that I – when I first got to the NFL, um, I kind of lost sight of. It's like, you know, I'm very multifaceted and very multi-talented, and so huh. – why would I look at this as like the only thing that I'm good at? I'm, I'm good at a lot more than just foot playing quarterback. Um, but this is where my passion lies, and I love to do it. And so that's where I just stay focused on that. Just good on you. Hard. I think that's really interesting, yeah. and, and we don't often hear that from players. Not that they don't have a lot of skills. Well, you can't skills. say that at the combine. At the combine, you have right. to say, football's yeah. my life. Yeah, yeah. This is all I know. Well, exactly. It's and everything I, I'm about. I think yeah. that's a good point. I think a lot of people in, in media at times want that to be the only thing that athletes are about because if you're doing 25 different businesses, businesses maybe there's time that could have been spent but right maybe the time spent on task is different from the knowledge and the skill set to be able to do all those things if it weren't to work out for you yes correct and um you know i, I spend all my time working on football being a quarterback uh so much so that you know my mom would always she always reminds me is like you know, give something else some time. But I'm like, hey, I, I only get so much time to play this game. And once I'm done, I'm done. So uh, I, I put all the hours that I have into being a great quarterback. See, we, all this warmth we're feeling. We talked about art before you jumped on, some of that you did as, as a youngster. And then Coach Carroll will come in here and tell us how hard-headed you can be sometimes. Yeah. And then, you know, we see Coach Carroll do one of these, like, zen moves on the sideline or something like that. Yeah. I think that was against who, the Chargers down in L.A. Yes, or something yes, like that. Yes, So who is that guy? Who, who's – because that's – what we're feeling right here uh i think it's like uh you know we talk about having a switch i think you know i just hit this switch and get into this mode i'm super super competitive and so um you know when it's when i'm in the weight room when i'm in the classroom on the practice field uh when i take the stage to go play these games uh i think i go from being eugene to gino and uh, that's where I just kind of hit the switch, and I'm all about winning, and I'm, I'm ready to give it all. And so I get a little overzealous sometimes. I get a little too passionate sometimes because I want to win that bad. And uh, it's great to have Coach Carroll to kind of cool, cool me down, you know, when I get in those heated moments. It's interesting to hear you say that maybe you lost sight of some of that early in your career. And obviously the beginning of your career didn't go the way you wanted it to. This part of your career goes spectacularly well over the last year or so. Do you think if you had been in a different organization, and this isn't about the Jets specifically, but if you had been in the right situation, could you have had that kind of success early in your career, or did you need to go through that and mature, et cetera? Um, I'll say two things. I think you can measure success in many ways. My rookie year went 8-8, eight and eight, missed the playoffs by one game. Um, you know, I think I had the most passing yards uh, as a rookie uh, in the Jets history, a bunch of good things happened. So it wasn't all bad, like, right. you know, kind of the perception the is, the yeah. narrative is. And then my second year wasn't as great. Um, ended the year that year with a perfect passer rating. Um, so I was getting better. I had gotten better, you know, from year one to year two, but our record wasn't as good. And so obviously the perception changed. But I think I needed those moments. I think I needed to be uh, hardened up and toughened up a little bit more. I think I needed to go through that fire in order to, you know, become the player that I am today and to be able to say the things and have the perspective that I have today because I'm very grateful for those times. Tell me about the three say and Fran games last year. Mm -hmm. What did you learn and how does that gap close this season? Yeah, man, um, San Fran, they had a tremendous season last year, great team. Um, one thing that I learned is how, how important it is to uh, take care of the football, especially when you play against those really, really great teams. Um, the margin of error is very slim. And so 
one possession could be the possession that changes the game. And I felt like, or, you know, each game we got a little bit better, uh, a little bit more familiar, familiar with the team and, and with playing those guys. Um, but they beat us. I mean, that's the truth about it. They beat us three times, and, uh, I mean, that that's that stunk, man. That hurt me. But uh, we get a chance to go at them again this year, and, and we're looking forward to it. You know, we'll get them at some point in the season, but, uh, you know, we got to start with, with the Rams week one. Maura, could you play me cut 19? This was Pete Carroll uh, a couple of weeks ago. We were asking him about the, the season and what to look forward to and kind of w- what else is next for you. Mm-hmm. And I think I asked him specifically, can you guys be even better this year if Gino doesn't improve, if he's just the same as what he was last year? This is what Pete said. Not really, but he, he's he's aspiring to, of course. But uh, if he can – I mean, he, he led the NFL in completion percentage. He almost hit the 70 mark that we've been shooting for all these years. Um, I think he lost it in the last week of the season. But um, that's the same thing. If he can be somewhere in that area, then he will be giving us the kind of play that we need. And he looks great physically. He, he's really in great shape and ready to go again. So let me apologize. What I what I had asked him was, do you need Gino to be better than last year? And that's right. why he says, no, not really. Do you believe that? Do you think you need to do anything better than you did last year in order for the team to take another step? I think, um, in my opinion, I think Coach Carroll is absolutely right. Um, a lot of me thinks that the season I had last year gets overshadowed for whatever reason. Um, I actually had a really, really good season. And um, when I talk about being better, I talk about being better in certain areas like the red zone or situations like third down or being better at protecting the football. Um, you know, keep, you know, keeping drives alive with my feet, you know, being more mobile, you know, doing some of those things. Uh, as far as the numbers go, I mean, it, it you got to do whatever it takes to win games, you know, so the numbers may not be as good or they may be even better. And I'm striving to be a lot better than I was last year, even with the numbers. But um, for me, it's situational. And um, I think that's what he's alluding to in that. That's the problem with quarterbacks, man. You could do like an hour, right? Now. He's got to run to a meeting. Um, can I, can we do like some rapid, rapid fire, fire stuff? Like go yeah. no huddle? Like Let's we're go. picking up the tempo like you guys did in the opening <laughs> drive of preseason game number two. First thought that comes to mind when I mention these guys. Your very first thought, DK. Physical specimen. <laughs> Lock it. Humble. Jackson. Natural. This Bobo guy. Route runner. What's with more Bobo? More Bobo. <laughs> Give him the ball. <laughs> he makes plays. Sneaky, funniest dude on the team. Uh, Nick Ballor or uh, Quandre Diggs. Why does Quandre pick on you a lot? Uh, he's short. You know, he's he's not that tall, but uh, he's my friend. You know, we got a great relationship. Hold on a sec. That I, I got to call you out on an answer. They, those guys can't be the sneaky funniest because they're sort of the n- obvious. They're funniest. the obvious ones. Yeah, I think you got to go deeper. Sneaky than funny. That. Uh, sneaky funny. Tyler Lockett. There we go. Yeah. See, that's different. I yeah. wouldn't have expected that one. Best Hooper on the team. Myself. Wow. Whoa. <laughs> not Pete. Really? Oh uh, no, I'll be, I'll get Pete. <laughs> Coach Carroll. Um, leader. Um, Shane Waldron system for you and him together, year three. What does that mean? More efficient. Can you go deeper? I know it's no huddle, but Bro, we're no go, huddle. Look could you go just a little, play. maybe just a next little play. bit deeper on that? What do you mean more efficient? <laughs> yeah, um, I think always being in the right play. Uh, we, we know how – I know how Shane wants things done. Um, he understands how I play, what makes me go. And so um, just always getting into the right play, um, you know, getting the ball in play moving the ball down the field, scoring more points. Are you going to be able to keep all these weapons happy? There's so many people in this team to throw the ball to, hand the ball off to. Like, do you uh, think about – that, is that a challenge at all? Uh, not with the guys that we have, man. We got so many humble guys who understand that it, there's one football. I know they're all competitive. They all want the ball. And uh, I do my best to spread it out. Do you hear from them? I mean, look, they're, I know they're humble, but they are wide receivers. I don't hear from them, but uh, you can feel them in the huddle sometimes if you don't, you know what I mean? If you don't give them the ball. What does that mean? And then you feel, can feel them. them. You know, just stay, you know, if you know your guys, yeah. you can feel them. Yeah. Okay. You know. That look. They just, they're staring at He'll you. He'll do that to me yeah, on radio yeah, sometime. Yeah. Like, right. On, wrap it yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, we, just, we got things you know, to go. Right? Uh-huh. Gino's got it. meetings to go to. Yeah. We, got, yeah. we got things to do. So, yeah. all right, last thing I, I have for you, and, and maybe it's a little off off beat, but Pete is so into competition. We hear about it so much. You go into last season competition. You mentioned it, a quarterback competition all throughout camp. This year, I know there's competition always, but you're out there taking all the first-team snaps. This is your job. Did you miss any of that? Um, you know, I, I don't because it's never left. 
we competing our butts off, man. Me and Drew, we go at it every single day, man. I mean, I know it's not like written about, but uh, we're trying to, you know, see who's the best quarterback out there, and who, you know, we we both get to a chance to go out there and prove ourselves. And I think that's made Drew a lot better, and that's made me a lot better. We're not looking at it as uh, the competition's over, uh, because every day we go in there and watch the film. So uh, we want to. And that's that's been awesome. We're we're completing at a high clip right now. Like we barely have incompletions in practice, and and that's because of the level of competition that we have. And so, uh, we're pushing each other, and we're getting better. Appreciate it, man. Do you know Rich Gann? Hold on, I'm not done. Bro, you know I Rich know Gann? Rich. He's I know Rich. Can you just tell me quickly? Because he's the name that keeps coming up. He's got ten minutes. <laughs> what? Do you get the comp a lot? I mean, when you met Rich, do, do you talk to him at all about sort of this late career resurgence, et cetera? Yeah, I remember watching when, uh, you know, when, when the Raiders were really good and went to the Super Bowl and uh, Rich had that, I believe, MV, MVP season and mm -hmm. uh, came back, had a, another really good season. Um, had Charlie Garner, had, uh, you know, Jerry Rice, had, uh, yeah. um, who was it, Tim, uh, Tim Brown, Tim had Brown. a bunch of great yeah. guys on that team. Um, I get the comp. Um, you know, I, I think the late surge in my career is, is very comparable to what, what Rich did. And um, I think for myself, I'm a little different. You know, I, I came in maybe with uh, high expectations and I've been a starter all my life. So I, I really never struggled until I got to the NFL and I'm grateful for it. And, you know, if I can do what Rich did, win the MVP and, you know, get to the Super Bowl and I'll be happy. Pretty cool. Let's go. Gino, thank you. Thanks for taking a few extra minutes with us. We appreciate it. No problem. Let's do it. Let's sit down for an hour in the off season yeah. and, yes, and hear about your life and your family and all that stuff. I appreciate it. Thank you, you for doing this. We yeah. appreciate it. Thanks, yes, Gino. Thank you.